everyone, welcome to Simon Tech Notes. My name is Christian and I'm part of the technical support team here. Today we will be going over Ultimate Access Tag Database. And for starters, we're going to open up Simon D application, which is the designer component of Ultimate Access. And then I'm going to navigate myself to the database icon on the toolbar, click it, and then we'll see this nice little interface pop up and I'm going to start making some tags using this new tag icon right here, clicking on it, and then you'll see all these options that pop up. So we have a group tag, which will make a folder for us that can host other tags within it. So this is used for organization. Then we have a digital tag, which is for zero and one bit data. And then we have an analog tag, which is used for, could be used for bit data, but mainly used for byte, word, double word, or float data types. And then we have string data type, which hosts word and character strings. So group, name, and type could be data types for string data. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off by making a group tag. I'm gonna name it group, creates me a folder. So to make a new tag inside of that, that folder, I'm not gonna click over here because I'm still in this directory. So I have to click down here on this side of the folder, the left-hand side. And when I click on that, I can pick a new tag and then I'm gonna use, I'm gonna make a digital tag, name it digital, and then I can press OK, and now I have a digital tag within my group folder, and then I'm gonna make a new tag. I'm gonna make an analog tag, naming it analog, press OK, put that in there, and then I don't wanna make any more tags inside this folder, how do I get out? I'm gonna go back to the original directory, create a string data type, press string, type in string, okay and now I have a tag that exists outside of that folder but say I want to move it into that folder so you click on the string tag right click it you can copy it but if you want it to disappear from this part you're gonna cut it click on the group folder right click paste and now the tag has been successfully moved into this folder and no longer exists in this directory right here so now that we've established the different types of tag data types let's go into real versus virtual. So a real tag is actually communicating with an IO device. IO devices are set up over here in IO devices. That will be for another lesson. Right now, I'm just gonna show you the difference between real and virtual. So going from real back to virtual, this is accessing the internal memory of your computer and using the memory bits there. Furthermore, let's go into the parameters of analog. So you'll see down here, we can save last status when closing, making it retentive. We can write initial value into an IO device, which would be like a cold initialization onto IO devices. And then you can see here, we can also assign an alarm tag. So this is how you would assign an alarm to any type of tag, and then you can tell it to go off at a certain given time. Now, a little bit about the advanced parameters. I can create an initial value for an analog. I can make it whatever I want. Um, I can change the data type from assigned integer. So this is where I would get a negative value. So if I pick integer 16, I get a negative right here. And if I do unassigned 16, I get rid of that negative and I get only positive numbers. I can also choose binary coded decimal and I can also choose float data if you're messing with decimals themselves. Also, I can scale the data type. If I scale the data type, say I wanted to cut it by one tenth, I would type in 0 0.1. Make sure you fill in a number for the offset. If you don't want to offset, just write zero. Otherwise, it won't save. So when you press OK and come back to it, the scaling will still be there. So I want to go over a different type of scaling, and it's PLC to SCADA scaling itself. So the SCADA software, if I'm going to put it from 0 to 10, and then the PLC software, I'm going to do negative 10 to 10. And you're going to ask me, well, how does this scaling work? Well, how does it map over? So for instance, the 0 maps to the negative 10. 10 maps to 10 like it should, but the, it gets tricky when you deal with the numbers in between. So 5 will map to 0 over here. 2.5 will map to negative 5 over here, and 7.5 will map to positive 5 over here. And then that is it for analog. Moving on to digital, if I look at the advanced features, I can choose whether I want the bit to be off or on. 
I can choose the bit to have a label for off and on, and I can also choose it to data log. And just like analog tags, I can pick a wide variety of options like cold initialization, alarm, or cause it to be retentive. The same features you will see within string data type, but that is it for this video. And thank you for watching.